Came to town to dreaming I could make my mark in spades. Forty odd years later, all my best cards have been played. Well, it's a hard knock situation when the accolades bestowed on your every last creation cries out middle of the road. But I don't care anymore about the fortune or the fame. I was better off before I tried to make myself a name All that money that I blew through Like some boot black off the farm Could not have vanished quicker If I'd have shot it in my arm Some so-and-so says, don't you know The limit is the sky Well, then the next thing I remember I'm learning how to fly But I don't care anymore A friend of mine and I had made a record with this producer in Crowley, Louisiana. He came to Nashville and we got a uh, phone call saying, get up here. I've signed you to a 10-year recording contract with Columbia Records and you're going out on the road opening for Kenny Rogers in the first edition. So I bought a D35 guitar with what little money I had, loaded up in my car and we drove nonstop to Nashville, slid in sideways. Later on found out that, no, there was no recording contract and we weren't going on the road to open for Kenny Rogers in the first edition. And in fact, the producer had sold our tapes and our publishing rights to our songs for $100. So later on, my friend Donovan and I, we went to uh, the Wilburn Brothers Surefire Music. Sure enough, sitting on the top of a filing cabinet was our eight-track tapes and uh, songwriting contracts. I sneaked in, stole our tapes, and they're, they're in the other room. <laughs> so that's how I got into music business. So when I got to Nashville, under false pretense, it was a, a real lucky break for me because in a short time, I fell into this scene that at the center of this scene was Guy Clark. Within his circle, there was Towns Van Zandt and Mickey Newberry. It was like, I'm blown away, you know? It's like, maybe I can do something like this. So I just started to pay really close attention. And the thing about Nashville in 1972 and 1973, the only discussion that happened was, you know, what are you writing? You know, how are you, how's it coming for you? Are you getting anywhere? Are you starting to, to really boil it down to that real true essence? As it turned out, all of the songwriters who were following that credo eventually wrote some songs that started to earn money. We all started to make money. So I think of myself day in and day out as someone who's waiting for the truth to find me, that I can get it down on a piece of paper, get it into a song, and keep distilling it down, revising it down until I get to the, the real essence of something that with any luck will be timeless. Your mouth still so soft, your countenance fair. Time stretches to shape you right out of thin air. But it can't hold the image if I blink you're not there. God, I'm missing you. Are you gone forever? Are you gone for good? Or have I gone crazy wishing you would? Come around the next corner, step off of that train. Your old black umbrella, face half in the rain. God, I'm missing you. Your every color rosebud 
Each turned up coat collar And your gaze slides by There's a sanded down moon In a tar paper sky God, I'm missing you The night's down to nothing The stars have withdrawn The horizon splits open That silvery dawn but the ghost of your breathing won't leave me alone God, I'm missing you Are you gone forever? Are you gone for good? Have I gone crazy wishing you would? Come around the next corner Step off of that train your old black umbrella Face half in the rain God, I'm missing you God, I'm missing you God, I'm missing you Songwriting is a relationship with the unknown. I believe that the songs exist fully formed elsewhere in some dimension that's not in this physical plane that we're in. And my job is to get it from elsewhere to here as intact as I possibly can. And it requires a great deal of patience for me. And so I'm really careful not to try to impose my sense of what the song should be. You get a burst of, of inspiration and you get 54% of a song. Well, you still got 46% left to go. I got very mindful about, okay, how am I going to, you know, improve upon my abilities through hard work to finish that 46%. But as time went on and I started to realize that inspiration is earned I have to get up and go to work, get back to the job of what I do, and uh, that place where inspiration exists, you know, outside of this realm that we're all talking to each other in. I get the feeling that it looks down and says, okay, he's still working at it, you know, let's send him a little bit. And then the inspiration, it starts to accrue in the form of one day's work, the next day's work, and, and I really adore that existence. Sometimes it's just, you know, the right morning is just, it's just a G chord and then you're off. You just start with a blank page and something comes to life. It rained today Clouds roll up at dawn All hell burst wide open Just like that was gone You little lap dog Chased a foxtail squirrel Across a main road through the woods some ninja on a dirt bike Nearly ran him down for good Right about now it gets quiet around here What with nightfall and the wings Four boards creak and the faucets leak But it's the emptiness that sings The wind grows chill Then lie still Forty miles from nowhere At the bottom of the world Friends don't call like they used to 
for reasons not unkind If anything that we can do Rings hollow down a telephone line So it's me, your little lap dog and that old brindle cat Trying to keep this place in line And riding in the town these days Is the last thing on my mind You always said I made my bed 40 miles from nowhere At the bottom of the world Forty miles from nowhere At the bottom of the world guitar with the right string is a real pathway to becoming a better guitar player. Sterling has been a, uh, a great friend and actually a benefactor. This guitar here, this is my main guitar. This guitar made me a better guitar player. I can point to it and say because of this guitar, because of the length of its neck, the way it vibrates up this neck, the way it feels, I always had a really good right hand, but my left hand was slow to develop. This guitar awakened my left hand. And I think because of this guitar, I started to pay attention to Lightning Hopkins. One thing about the blues guys, they were grown men. Even when they were young men, they were grown men. There was something virile about it, you know? And so I, I've been developing that you know, in, in my time, and I've been writing songs around that to discover m my own inner blues guy. And uh, he's been finding his way out, you know. Well, I grew up hungry, and I grew up hard. Took the streets and alleys from my own backyard. I got a break and it on my list of crimes. Been before the judge one too many times. Each Houston blue who scale of one to ten, about a nine and a half, where it's always been. Is in a drag and water and in a bar ditch mud. Each Houston blue gets in the poor boy's blood. I'm certainly not chasing the airwaves or stardom, but what I am looking for is self-expression, more and more self-expression. I'm an artist, you know? I'm just painting pictures and making stuff up as I go. <laughs> Start out not knowing where I'm going. <laughs> Don't know until I get there. <laughs>